Hello, welcome to Zahid Startup Mining channel once again. My name is Zahid Islam and today I'm going to introduce one of our papers on discretization. Discretization of continuous attributes. The paper was published in Expert Systems with Applications in 2016. You can find the preprint version of the paper on my web page. Go to the publication link, look for the discretization paper, and here is the paper that I'm going to present today. And there is a preprint version that you can directly download from the research gate. Please feel free to read the paper from the research gate, but today I will give a brief uh, introduction to the paper so that you get the first understanding and when you go and read the paper, it makes more uh, clearer sense. Now what we mean by discretization is as follows. Let's imagine that we have a data set uh, like this as an example, and here is a, a numerical attribute uh, called members and a categorical attribute called city. Now, the numerical attribute has numbers, one, two, three, four, etc. For various reasons, many, many a times, we need to actually convert these numerical numbers into, into, uh, in, in, intervals, into categories. And that's the reason why we need a discretization technique to categorize a numerical value. For example, here, the numerical values have been changed into different categories like one to three and four to seven and we can now see the values have been changed that is the new numerical values if we consider uh, the values that we have for this numerical attribute and if we impose a cut point this red line vertical line and we create two categories or two intervals because of the cut point then we can actually categorize the numerical values as one to three this one and four to seven this one so now we have two different categories now the question is where to put the cut point that's that's the that's a question like in, uh, we can put a cut point anywhere and create a category create two categories but what is the best place to put the cut point what are the considerations and how many cut points we should uh, create uh, for a for a variable for an attribute and why so these are the questions now this paper addresses those questions and and proposes a technique now the basic understanding of the paper uh, understandings of the paper is as follows it actually uses an existing uh, discretization technique called kaim for discretization but it modifies kaim uh, it just doesn't use it as it is um, and uh, Kaim actually uses just the class attribute as the reference variable for discretizing any numerical attribute. Say, for example, uh, this is a small toy example of a data set, right? So in real life, a data set may have many categorical attributes and many numerical attributes. So, and one of those categorical attributes can be a class attribute. Um, and Kaim considers that it will actually uh, discretize each of the numerical attributes one by one based on the categorical att class attribute. Now, this proposed technique, in this technique, we argue that why just class attribute? Why not all other categorical attributes? We understand that class attribute has a special, should have a special relation with uh, all other attributes, including these numerical attributes. We are, we agree with that, but we also argue that some some other categorical attributes should also have or can also have those kind of special correlation or special relationship and we can actually take advantage of those attributes moreover in some low accuracy data sets a class attribute uh, may not be a good reflection or may not be a good reference point for discretization because the data sets accuracy is very low so in those cases, if we take advantage of all other categorical attributes, it is more likely that we may get a more reasonable discretization. And 
above all in many cases there can be a data set that does not have a class attribute something like that so another modification of this proposed technique is it only uses low frequency cut points as cut points so uh, for example uh, it will only impose a cut point between three and four if both three and four have very low frequency that means low appearance in the data set the reason this proposed technique does that is because it wants to minimize the information loss due to categorization or discretization of numerical attributes what what do we mean by information loss is say for example if we impose a cut point between three and four then we create two different categories one to three and four to seven now these two categories become altogether um, separated different now so three and four in the before doing this categorization or discretization three and four were very close to each other right but now after discretization one and four and three and four are equally distant because both one and three belong to category one which is one to three and four belong to belongs to category two which is four to seven so one and seven is now equally distant as three to four so there is a loss of information because of this right now if these two uh, values three and four both of them have low frequency that means only few records in the data set um, will be affected by this uh, discretization by bordering these values uh, uh between three and four if the number of frequencies or number of appearances of three or four are both very low but if both three and four had high frequencies that means many records in the data set uh, actually have values three and four then by imposing a discretization at this cut point we are affecting many records right so many records will suffer from that information loss so that sort of argument we have in this paper and with that that that's the reason why we wanted only low frequency cut points and also it uses uh, it another modification of kaim is it uses a uh, numerical attribute that has just been discretized as a categorical attribute for the next numerical attribute for that attributes discretization so therefore it first finds out the numerical attribute out of all numerical attributes that has the highest correlation with all uh, categorical attributes and because then that has the highest chance of getting a good categorization discretization that's why it first discretizes that numerical attribute and after discretization that numerical attribute itself is considered as a new categorical attribute and then the technique goes to the second best numerical attribute um, and categorizes that so the steps of this uh, uh, approach are like this first we copy the data set df into df prime we have a separate copy and then we rank the numerical attributes based on the correlation ratio with all categorical attributes as i just mentioned and then we discretize all numerical attributes of df prime one by one first we do the best numerical attribute which has the highest correlation with all categorical attribute and then we do the second one and finally we return the discretized data set. now here are some notations aj is a is a uh, numerical attribute that belongs to the set of numerical attributes an ak is a categorical attribute that belongs to the set of ac and alpha j is actually the average correlation of the j attribute aj uh, that eta j k and we are summing them up and divide by c so that's the average correlation we find that and then we know which attribute has the highest correlation now f j is the frequency of the values of the jth attribute so this is the jth attribute say for example this is a j and one happened only once if you look at this data set two happened twice three appeared once four appeared zero times so these are the frequencies so we've calculated all these frequencies there and then we calculate the average frequency so any attribute any cut any value uh, that has frequency higher than the average frequency 
we consider that is not qualified to be a cut point. It's too dangerous to have a, impose a cut point at that point. So that's why we create a set of cut points where the uh, frequency is lower than the average frequency and that set we call candidate cut points so that these are our candidate cut points now to start with we have a final set of cut point as just the first value so we have a cut point here and cut point there so we have a boundary now that's our final uh, set of cut points now for any possible cut point we now compute this. So we actually take vote for all possible cut points one by one. Now I'm explaining the voting technique or how to vote for the first cut point. Now let's imagine our first cut point is between three and four. So we actually create a matrix like this. So here, these are the intervals or categories created because of the cut point, imposed cut point. So if we have imposed a cut point between three and four, now for the first time, we have two categories, one to three and four to seven. And these are the categories of the uh, corresponding categorical attribute that we are considering at this stage. And they, in this case, say, for example, Sydney and Bathurst. Say, if this is an example, say, if we do it like this, so we have one to three and four to seven. These are the two categories. You may wonder how come we have five or three, three categories because of the, because of the one cut point. That's because uh, after we have a good cut point, we will add that into the final set of cut points and then we will still look for other cut points. So for one attribute, we may have eventually multiple cut points. Okay, so for, for taking the vote first to see what is the vote for this cut point, uh, how how suitable this cut point is, we first calculate W this one, W J I K, uh, which is the interdependency, attribute interdependency kind of thing. So max Q and Q goes from one to Y. You may see that Y is this, so it's actually going from this direction for all these categories. In this first instance, we have two categories. So we have two categories, right? So max Q, when Q equals ones, is the maximum value along this line. So it's a four and F plus Q is this one, F plus one. So when Q equals one, that's this uh, interval total. So four of four. So that means it's actually one. And then when Q equals two, then max is five, five of five. So it's actually one. So one plus one equal to two and divided by two y value is two. There are two categories in this particular instance. But as I explained before, you may have multiple categories. That's because uh, once we get a good category, we add that into the final set of category and then we look for other categories because one attribute may have multiple cut points. And therefore, from one attribute, numerical attribute, we may have several uh, categories uh, created. And But all these things happen completely automatically, right? Now, this interdependency, attribute interdependency is computed. Then the next thing we compute is the uh, uncertainty of the two attributes. So we calculate the probability of Q and R, these two values over full N. N is the total number of records. So what is the probability of this over the whole records? What is the probability of this? And then we calculate sort of an entropy uh, for, for this, uh, for this, uh, uh, categories and that uncertainty or entropy is computed and finally then voting is calculated this way. This is the weighted vote, right? So this is the weighted vote and this weighted vote has k equals 1 to c. Remember all so far whatever we have done this interdependency calculation entropy is considering one numerical attribute with only one categorical attribute. But as I said before there there can be in a data set multiple categorical attributes. So this is the voting the now this is the voting coming from one categorical attribute but when we have multiple categorical attributes so that k goes from 1 to c. So we have j i k, then w j i k, u j i k times w j i k divided by this, and then we go for the second k. So we repeat the same process, right? And finally, we find a vote for the ith cut point for the jth attribute. Now, similarly, then we move this cut point to the second one, third one, fourth one, all the candidate cut points and we will calculate this vote for all the possible candidate cut points. And finally, the candidate cut point that gives the best vote will be chosen as a 
real cut point for that that attribute and that cut point will be added included into the final set of cut points then we will repeat the process again so after this final that's that now it ex, ex, makes sense right why we can or how we can have multiple categories now when we have added that then we can have again multiple categories the same process will be uh, done again and another cut point will be added now this process will continue as long as we have a cut point that has a voting uh, which uh, is more than the previous maximum voting so that means like when we run out of possible cut points we have a cut point and we don't find good voting we know that we don't need to keep on doing it anymore as always thanks for watching